In this next section, we are now going to look at some common specific transactions. Now, basically what these are, uh, these are transactions that we see often in exams. These are a collection of our section 11 zero rated and our section 12 exam supplies. You'll see what I've tried to do is just to combine them to make it a little bit easier for you to study. Again, please remember, as we said before, when we are looking at discussion questions, you need to be able to discuss the definition, timing, value, and any other special rule. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is we are going to talk about exports. Now, in section 1, they give us the definition of what it means to be exported. It says, in relation to any movable goods, so you can only export movable things, you can't export a building, for example. Supplied by any vendor under a sale or an installment credit agreement. It means, if it has been consigned or delivered by the vendor to the recipient at an ad address in an export country. This is the most important one. In other words, um, goods are shipped. And I'm saying shipped, it doesn't mean on shipped, sent, delivered outside of South Africa. Remember, export country means now South Africa. Right, and then paragraph D. This is, so remember, you have to read the first sentence again, so I'm going to just go through it. It says, in relation to any movable goods supplied by a vendor under a sale or installment agreement, it means it has been removed from the Republic by the recipient for conveyance to an export country in accordance with regulations made in this Act. Okay, so let me explain to you. Paragraph A is what is called a direct export and paragraph D is what is called an indirect export. A direct export is the seller which is a South African vendor, exports directly to a country outside of South Africa. So I've got a business, I sell um, African art. Someone in America contacts me and says, I want to buy art and I ship it to them overseas. That's a direct export. An indirect export is the buyer... takes the goods outside of South Africa. Right, so what does that mean? So I've got my shop, my art shop, my African art shop. Someone from the USA comes to my shop in South Africa in Johannesburg. They buy art and they take it with them when they go overseas. That is an indirect export. I, as the seller, the VAT vendor, is not, I'm not directly exporting it. Now, why is that important? Because there are rules here. If it is a direct export, so remember, I ship, I'm the seller, I sell it to the American, I, and I ship it to America, it is zero rated. If it is an indirect export, it's a little bit different. Now, how it works is, an indirect export if someone comes to my shop and says, listen, I'm from America, I want to buy these things, I'm going to take it with me. If they have the necessary documents, export documents, so they fill in everything with customs, and they'll have to tell you this in a question, then it is zero rated. However, if they do not have the necessary items, then that will be charged at our current rate of 15%. Right, it will be charged at our current rate of 15%. Now, the reason for this is, I need to be able to prove to SARS. SARS obviously doesn't want us to have zero rated things if it's not relevant. Because remember, I'm just going to remind you how it works. This is an invoice. If I issue an invoice to someone, sell price X VAT, um, VAT and the selling price including VAT, if I sell something for 100 rands, this VAT at 15 rands, it's 115 rands. SARS will receive that output tax of 15 rands. It's a cash inflow for them. So when it is zero rated, that becomes a null there. So SARS gets null. So SARS wants to make sure that you're not cheating them and not, char uh, not giving them null when you should be giving them VAT. So what they're saying is, they say, if you have the documentary proof 
that this person will export it. They've done everything correct. We understand it's base, it's definitely going to be an export, so zero rate it. But if you can't prove that that person is going to export it, you must charge us that. Now, guys, you'll see there's a special rule over here. Don't want you to worry about it too much right now. It says that there are situations where there will be output tax when you export. And that is only when you've bought secondhand goods from a non-vendor. And we're going to study this separately later on. Once you've studied secondhand goods from a non-vendor, this will make a, lot, make a lot more sense for you over there. Now, we've been looking at the export of goods. See? They can only export goods. Remember, the definition said the export of movable goods. But now, in section 11, we also have section 11.2, which is all of the services. Now, if I render a service to someone, so I'm a South African vendor and I fix things. So I fix computers, let's say. If I perform my services outside of South Africa, it will be zero rated. If I go and I do repairs or perform services, which has relation to land improvements in a foreign country, it will be zero rated. So if I am a company that does painting, and I go and paint something in Botswana, for example, not in South Africa, it's zero rated. Because I'm basically not doing it in the country. Now, if I give services to a non-resident, it will be zero rated. But only if the non-resident is situated in a foreign country. So what does this mean? Let's say I'm a person that gives, I uh, give you um, advice on how to set up your computer. Advice on setup of computer. Okay, so that's a service I render you. Now, if I give it to an American citizen, someone from the USA, it will be zero rated, but that person must be in America when I give it. So basically, the person cannot be in South Africa. So how it works, there's an interpretation note for you guys to read through, which you'll see is uploaded onto the platform. Interpretation notes are SARS's way of interpreting the act. It doesn't mean it's law yet, but this is what SARS is. This is how we interpret the act, and this is what we will apply. You can go and challenge in storm court, but most of the time, people accept this because they can see what SARS is going. So, the general principle is, is that South Africa is a destination, the VAT in South Africa is a destination-based tax, which means we want to charge VAT if it's consumed or used in South Africa. So, in other words, if it's not in South Africa, VAT should not be considered. Right, so, if services are rendered to a non-resident, and a non-resident is in South Africa at the time, it is not zero rated. So then it means you must charge that. Now, there's just one thing to just be aware of, the master currency court case. Again, guys, just the principle is important, not so much the name. In the master currency court case, there was a exchange, a currency exchange, and basically what they did is they gave services in, this, in the Old Tambos International Duty Free Area. And they didn't charge VAT. So in the airport, an American citizen would come to them and say, listen, I've got some South African rands. I want to change it into dollars because I'm leaving the country now. I'm going back home to America. They would then charge them a fee, master currency. And master currency didn't charge VAT because they said um, it's in a duty free area. The court said, no, that's wrong. The, it's not goods that you're giving, you're giving a service, and that resident or that person that you're giving the service to, the American citizen, was in South Africa at the time, therefore you must charge VAT on that. There will also be some lecture examples for you illustrating that.